Welcome to Talking Heads. We're here with John McGuinness, TT legend, racing legend, 30 years of racing this year. Uh, so, and a long time Bennett's ambassador as well. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to catch up with John now that uh, lockdown has eased up. <laughs> So John, what have you been doing during during lockup then? Uh, I've been doing I've been busy, but doing probably busy doing all the bits you don't want to do, but they're on the back burner, you know, painting the outside toilet block. Uh, we cleaned out our woods. We made a little path with the family. Uh, we've done loads of little cool stuff, and then in one way I've enjoyed it. You know, it's nice to have the kids at home really. And uh, and we're super. I'm super lucky. We're all super lucky because we have a bit of space here and a few toys. And when you look out the window, when you know you're looking at horror stories all over the place. When I looked out my window, nothing had changed. You know, so we are super lucky. But yeah, we've. I've been doing a bit of work on some of my bikes. I've been uh, took some fences down, like I said, we've done a bit of painting. Grass She's, is looking good. Yeah, grass is good now. Yeah, we fed the grass. Uh, Bit of a uh, slurry on it, a cow poo on it, uh, some it green. Uh, bought a new mower for me, tractor. Uh, built a go kart track, which is yeah. nice to have a track in your garden. It's it's quite fast. We've got two twin engine Honda Pro Kart. So who's got yeah. that record at the moment? At the moment, it's David Todd. David Todd at the minute looks like he's going to top for, the leader. For real, for was it bit. the virtual lap he did? Oh, the virtual laps. Yeah, he was. Virtual car. It was pretty epic on the old virtual yeah, TT one, so. it but he's obviously got nothing else in his life, has he, apart from training, brushing his hair, and... His teeth are very white, aren't he, they? He's a nice kid. No, he's good he's a nice kid. I've had him up here, and because I've been around the game a long time, sometimes I feel like some of the dads, really, and they, they sort of uh, ask me indirectly, and I was the same when I was that age, I used to nip at people's ears, you know, and Jim Moody looked after me a little bit, and a few of the riders, and I feel like I'm that the older generation now so and he stopped at my house and but the biggest thing with people like Davey that you know they he says please he says thank you he doesn't expect it you know he's, yeah, no, he's, he's done his gone. he's done his hard work you know and he served his time he's been through that period where he's done a, you know, he's done a couple of TTs a couple of North West, a couple of Ulster Grand Prix so he's you know the he's got that much talent and he, and he had this much experience which yeah. doesn't line up now it's it's sort of all planets are aligning so yeah, so David's fastest on the carts. We've got my uh, the guy who who owns basically the team, this Ducati team I'm riding in. So what, uh, just, Andre? Because I don't yeah. think a lot of people know about what's uh, going on with that side to side track. Yeah, so it's a bit, it's a it's a little bit under the radar. It's a little bit. I've looked at the championship for a couple of years, this Ducati Cup, and uh, you know I had Honda uh, contracts, which wouldn't was, was impossible for it to happen and things, and then you know my injury and stuff. But now uh, it's. I think there's there's a, a big spread of age, there's a big spread of talents, there's fast lads, slow lads, old lads, young lads, so I think somewhere <laughs> I'll slot into the middle of it. I just I think it's a it's a gr it's a good machine, it's a, it's a, everybody's on equal bikes. They're not as powerful as a super bike, they're you know, sort of six hundred power, so and one of the things what lured me into it is that when I stopped doing sort of British Championship and went to World Endurance and other events I, I missed going to our circuits. Yeah. I think we've got some of the best circuits in the world. Yeah. 100%. Your Cadwells, your Altons, your Brands Actors, your, your Thruxtons, they're all old school, proper, you know, nads at times, <laughs> tracks. And, uh, you know, like your Le Mans and your Magni Coors and your, I raced in Qatar and all these. I'm thinking, yeah, they're great. It was great and yeah. a great experience, but it ain't like Cadwell where you you know, yeah. grass to grass to, you know, and every, all the cameras we, we use and stuff. So I missed those. So it was so, ticking all the boxes for me. So, so we've got two. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was about staying, staying sharp then, really, wouldn't you? 100% the staying sharp. Priority for me was the TT in the Northwest. I needed to get sharp, but it, there's a, there's ways of getting sharp, isn't there? And you, you, there's no point going into super stock or super bike and getting beaten up and getting shoved about and some young lads embedded in the side of me, which is not what I want it to be because that can actually be reversed, make you 
lose your confidence where yep. you know if you're running at the sharp end of a one mate championship you're on the start line you've gone through all the motions you've done all the setting up you're on the grid away you go and you have a good result you know you think you just have that spring in your step yep. and it just psychologically helps you and that's where I wanted to be and that's where I thought it was going to be obviously things have changed but riding with Andre Andre Compton nobody well Andre was a professional speeder rider yeah. So he's got the minerals. He can actually ride a road race bike. Yeah, very, yeah. very good. Yeah, it was very good. customer track day last yeah. year. He can do it. And I'm like, again, he's a lot of talent. <laughs> you know, at some stage, he's going to end up on his head, which we all do. There's no pressure. No. It's not a manufacturer. And I didn't want to make a song and dance about it because it, at the end of the day, we're, we're, he's paid for it all himself. You know, he's, he's paid for the bikes. He's you know, not really getting any help off anybody at the minute. So I'm not, not going to make a too much of a thing about it. But... You know, I'm not going to get, nobody's going to turn the nose up if I'm sat in the paddock with a can of beer in my hand and the barbecue going. And that's where I, I always thought my racing, what my own racing was about anyway, you know. So. It's going to put a big target on your back though, even though you say <laughs> it's not like super stock, but you're on a grid mm. with people and they will be younger riders, experienced riders. Yeah. But, you know, you're John McGuinness, so people are going to go, I want to be McGuinness. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I get it, you know, and, and I, I just, just hope there's mutual respect for everybody on the track, you know, I don't think, you know, you, you, you win the Ducati Cup, we're not going to go on to be MotoGP winners, you know, I think there's riders in there that, I know there's a couple of lads in Mark Cheat who's been around forever and, you know, there's there's that Levi David, the Aussie kid, you know, and, and there's that young Ben Godfrey and, and, you know, to be honest, hey, I'll hold my hand up, am I going to be out of room with them? Probably not, but I don't care, you know, as yeah. long as, hey, if they give me room and all that, though, and I'll give, let's, you know, let's just be, intelligent about it and enjoy it and, and what will be will be but yeah I'm sure I'm going to get some some paint striped off me at some stage <laughs> so, I mean you got you got a chance to get out on the bike this last week you know, Autumn Park yeah. yeah I loved it I loved it honestly I've been a bit with this lockdown and nobody's really known about it have we nobody's we don't know what's going to happen do we and everybody's just been chipping away you know maybe two or three more people around at the house been for a walk and Few little shops opening, and, and I, I got I got a little bit because I've been racing for so long. It's hard to keep the motivation and, and and keep that you know that what you need. But I ummed and about going to Ulton as well. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, sort of. I thought, oh, shall I go? Shall I go? And Even then, though it's all open, that you're allowed to do that. Yeah, obviously. yeah, it was. It wasn't much the, the the virus thing. It was just me. I was like, but when I got to Ulton Park, it was a beautiful day. Bike looked mint, and I was like. Oh, that looks nice, that, you know. Got the leathers on and fired the bike up out of pit lane. I was just like, I loved it. Yeah. It all just come back. Great circuit, great bike. Came in, you know. That was good. Nice. Just nice, you know. This is what amazes me about you, and we, talk, and we do talk a lot, and then you, sometimes you, you talk yourself out of things. You, what mm. you've achieved, we've just been going through the trophies and memories and all those things. You know, mm. you've achieved so much in so many different you know, levels and different types of races, and yet you're still your, you sort of, oh, should I go out on, on mm. track? Mm. Is it because it's been a long time off? I just don't want to fail, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't really want to make a fool of myself, you know. You've got nothing to prove. I know, but I've raced for 30 years and I've raced motocross for longer, you know, most of my life I've been on two wheels and, you know, when, you, you know, when you're here and, and I've had a, I haven't had a bite of the cherry the last couple of years. You know, the last time I rode good was end of 16. And at TT16, I was on the podium with Hutchie and Dunlop. And I felt I was at my peak, still good. 17 went wrong, 18, 19 went wrong. I thought, do I really want to do it? And when I rode the bike, it, it brought it all back that I really want to do it. I can't let go of it, you know, and I didn't, never ever wanted my career to finish. I've said it before, I crashed at Northwest with no fault of my own. That would have been a horrific way to end me racing. And a bolt hanging out of the Norton on the, cl at the mountain, you know, engine bolts dragging along the ground is not where I wanted. No. I didn't visualise my end of my career of motorbike racing stood at the bongo with a, with a total mess. Yeah. The whole thing was a mess. And you don't forget it doesn't matter what, 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 what happened, you know, you, you can point fingers everywhere, but it was a disaster. And I felt like I'd let people down They'd let me down, you know. I'd sold my merchandise with John McGinnis note, and it was it was Hollywood. On paper, it was Hollywood. And I'm sat there with a broken engine bolt, thinking I've delivered nothing. 
you know, it's somebody try to tell me something. And then I go to Macau to ride a birdie's V4. I'm absolutely bang on the money, you know what I mean? With, all, with everybody, Hickey and a lot of them. So. It must be so frustrating. Like you say, it wasn't no fault of your own with what happened at the Northwest. And then obviously it didn't really work out with Norton. No. And then obviously Pete Excellence this year, great mm. bike. He always puts a great bike out. And then obviously, mm. you know, mm. COVID-19 happens. So how do you feel now? You know, there's, there's no TT, there's no classic TT. Even. Yeah, I think we just got to wait and we've got to be patient. And like I say, there's, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it, you know. And motorbike racing is a, yeah. this much in the world, isn't it? Yeah, you, it's know? Not, <laughs> yeah. you know, in my world, it's everything. It's, and I sometimes need a kick in the backside. Yeah. And I got my little kick again on Wednesday. I thought, bloody hell. And considering you were thinking about not, not doing yeah, it. Yeah, it was, I was looking at weather thinking, but I would have never thought that. Yeah. Fucking get yourself there, boy. And, you know, and I rode and I rode and rode and rode around in about six, seven, eight sessions. And I was like, and it, it, it felt like my office, you know. Yeah. I was riding a motocross bike and it's on Sunday at Fat Cats, a place in Doncaster. It bumps that big. Yeah. With a lot of British motocross riders who are 20 year old. And I'm thinking, you know, you silly old bastard. What are you playing at? Do you know what I mean? It's the wrong environment. When I'm in my environment, yeah, feels right. everything felt right. So it was what I needed. And, uh, and, and Andre, he's honestly... You want to meet anybody more enthusiastic? He's desperate no, he's to, to nice do guy. to do well. You got six rounds yeah. of it this year as well. Yeah, I think we've got five. I think we drop we drop one at Donington. I don't think we do Donington full circuit, but I think we do all the other ones. But I think two rounds, ten races, and I'm, I want to get in my camper. I want to load my fridge up yeah. with food. I want to put my gear in the camper. I want to put the water in the camper. Have you got this? You know, kids get in it with me. We all go racing as yeah. a family unit. And that's what I've missed, you know, and, and, and it's, 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 it's what I live for, you know, and it's going to be a big hole to fill. Like you said, you said before, nothing I have to prove, but I haven't. But what, still what, what, what am I going to fill that void with when it's finished, you know? That's what I was saying, I mean, where do you see yourself 10 years from time? You know, what's... 100% involved with, with motorcycles, 100% involved with the industry. And, uh, I, you know, I hope that, the loyalty I've shown with a lot of people over the years that they stay with me and I'm sure I can give a little bit back to the sport or the other industry and stay involved you know I've got loads of ideas whizzing around in my head you know fucking do this do that you know do some tours do some you know that, maybe some enduro stuff maybe some ride outs maybe just just something but what, what I like people yeah I like I like to meet people, mate. I like to understand how people work, you know, like customers or track day riders or you go to the bike show and you listen, somebody's got a story. And it's up to you whether you think it's a lot of rubbish or it's but genuine you, or not. But you still want to hear it. I still do. I still love listening to people, you yeah. know, and everybody's got a reason for it, haven't they? Everybody's got a reason why he's got a BMGS. He's got a reason why he's got a BMHP4 or he's got a two-stroke KR1S in his garage. Because he had one, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. We're all a big community, really, yeah. and I, you know, I'd like to stay involved in that. I won't walk away from it because I, I love it too much. I love the bikes, you know. I've got a big bike collection myself, got from everything: two strokes, speedway bikes, some of my, you know, iconic TT winning bikes, which I'm proud of. You know what I mean? And well, there was a, there was a stuff around, tweet it? this week though that basically suggested that maybe that you know, time to give some other people a chance. And <laughs> how did you feel yeah. about that? Hit a nerve, that yeah, yeah, hit a nerve, you know, because I, I. If you really knew me, I, I'm totally the opposite, you know. Now, I'm working hard yeah. to pay my bills. I'm working hard to keep sponsors happy. I'm trying to, I've got a couple of windows of opportunity to showcase it, and that happens. I thought, no, no, you're not, you're not getting away with that one. You're I think that's one. why people like you, John, though, because you do say it how it is, and maybe... No, not to lies, though. I don't no. bullshit. No. I just, I'm a people person. I speak to the families. I speak to the kids. I'm, anybody who wants to sign think I'm, I'm the last man standing. Yeah. And then you call me a crybaby because, and the, the, the frustrating thing is, is, you've had your shilling out of it, you've had your shilling out of it, stop moaning. And what's that supposed to mean? No, it's been a professional motorbike racer since 1999 for 21 years. I won 23 TTs. I'm a professional sportsman. I've had a few shillings out of it. Tyson Fury lives two miles away, he's getting 60 million a fight. Has he had a shilling out of it? <laughs> what am I getting on? I'm not going to starve, but I'm not, I'm not like, 
I'm not well, wealthy as bugger it is. But there's, so. there's, there's still riders older than you all that are out there. I mean, Bruce, still out there. Of course still there the is. Sharp and we do it for the love of the sport as well. Yeah. You can't do it for nothing because we've got a value because we, we are what we are. But you still, we still do it because we love it. You know what I mean? It's not for the money. The money's a joke, really. <laughs> but maybe I'm getting a bit old and a bit grumpy. I just like, I just like everybody for who they are. Anybody who's working, anybody who's got off their ass to make something, everybody who's racing his bike at club level, anybody who's made it to whatever level, you've got to be applauded. Why kick some? If you've not got anything nice to say, don't say it. What's the point? That's what I tell my kids. Just, yeah. just forget it. Keep it to yourself. So aside from <laughs> building up the Ducati Cup bikes and sorting out your lawn and jobs around the house, building the wall, any other projects on the go? What's on the bench? Uh, well, we've got a, a CBR 600 on the bench at the minute. What year uh, is that? Do you know what? I'll probably line it up. All three, I think. All two or all three. All two. I think it's all two. Is it an F? F sport. FX. Yeah, FX. F. <laughs> fuel injected. F summit. They're all the same, aren't they? Black, it's black frame, isn't it? So they were silver That's, frame, weren't they? Is that O1 or O2? O1, they were black frame and they might have been an FX. And the O1 was the first fuel injected one. 2000 was still carbureted. <laughs> I think. But, I'm so, sure because I replaced Jim Moody in 2000. That was on carbs and that was a Castro bike. That was our silver frame. Silver frame. Yeah. And then he went to black frame in all one. I had a great year with Kirk McCarthy. Yeah. So we lost Kirk in 2003. He was a great company. I had such a laugh. And days are gone, I said. There were me, DJ, Stuart Easton, there'd be Glenn Richards, Jim Moody. And we all used to stay on a Sunday night and just get weathered. It was just a mass. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it was just a mass bender. Just a huge party every Sunday. It was class and, you know. Doesn't happen now. No, no, everybody's, whew, everybody's away. But they're, they're, they were mega, so, yeah, but I've got, I mean, it's, it, what I want to do, basically, is build a replica of my 2002 World Super Sport bike. Now, why I really want to build that is a good, is a massive question mark over it, because it probably was one of my worst years ever of racing, because... I got pneumonia. I went to South Africa, I went to Kyle Army, and I got on the plane. I thought, you know, whew, I don't feel very well here. Was that for the first round? Was Kyle Army the first round that year? No, Valencia, I think. Valencia were first round. We had a round in Valencia, then Australia, then we went to Kyle Army. I think it was Valencia, wasn't it? Yeah. Valencia, yeah. yeah. It was a nightmare. But I blew up, and anyway, nightmare. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm on the boat, on the boat, on the plane, like, <laughs> I'm sweating and feeling a bit feverish. It got worse and worse when I got there. I was there on the Friday, I rode the bike in the first pre-practice and I came in, we were doing a bit of a debrief and I just wasn't there at all. They went, oh, you better go and see a doctor. So I said, oh, we've got, we think we've got pneumonia, which <laughs> it was bizarre. We were the circuit doctors, called them stools, which is your poo, isn't it? He said, are stools white? I was like, well, they are, actually. are they floating? <laughs> I mean... Some do anyway, at any time, don't they float? Or, don't... They don't come out white easily, though. Well, I mean, not white them. like a... Like an old dog shit. Right? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? those anymore, no, do you? don't know why they don't eat bones. Do they? they don't eat bones anymore. But it, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like you better just go anyway. I went. I went to this hospital in uh, South in Kyle and then Johannesburg. You know, it's supposed to be the best hospital. It's still pretty shocking. There was a Chinese man next to me in the bed, and he just pooed bed three or four times a day. And just told the nurse he was doing it for madness. And then there was another tried guy trying to commit suicide out of the. Uh, out the window, about 14 floors up, and he came with drill and, and screwed the <laughs> screwed the window shut, the sash in the window shut. Anyway, it was, <laughs> so yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a torrid year or two, but it's still part of my journey, you know. Yeah. I, I won't say career. Career's weird. It's a weird, weird thing. Career. It's a, I don't call it a career. You just it's said a journey. You're, you just said you're a professional sportsman. That yeah, means that I know, but it's, your career. yeah, but it's weird, isn't it? It's a journey. Though. You see, it's some people they've had a career. What what career they have? Never done anything. No. They call it a career. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so I did do world. I did do world championship season. All but one round. So it was a yeah. Did all the round. Well, I missed. I missed Japan because it clashed with the TT. Right. So they put a Japanese rider on to replace me, uh, and then I, you know, I was dashing about. I remember dashing around from. We did Monza, and I jumped off the bike at Monza and drove Not non-stop. <laughs> no, no, I finished. 
Do you know what? I might have finished about last. You was, told me you were one and a half seconds yeah, off pole. in qualify, off pole, yeah, and that was last, last on the grid. Last, yeah. This is when Super Sport 600 was like mm. crazy, crazy competitive. Well, there's two factory Yam teams, factory Suzuki Zuki, team, factory Ducati, McPherson, and somebody else. There were Fabian Foro with the 10 Carter setup. There was Chambon, Charpentier. It just went on and on and on the yeah. list. I, I, I tried my best. I tried my best. So hard to learn circuits. You know, the old Assams, you know, miles bigger than it is now. And I was like, Ugh. 40 minutes then to qualify and bike broad. It was a long, I could write a book about that one season. Okay. And, uh, you know, I came from Monza, jumped in motor on, went to Northwest, finished second at Northwest, went from there, from Northwest to Silverstone, to that soaking wet disaster meeting there. And yeah. I had to fly out of, fly out of there to go to the Isle of Man for this practice. And yeah, honestly, it was just, and you, and you want to build a replica yeah I want to build a replica yeah yeah it did. vintage year I scored a few world championship points yep. but everybody really, everybody sees me as a TT rider yeah yep. you know I, I'm just a TT rider but I won a British championship 21 years ago you know I finished third in Superstock British championship in 09 I nearly won the Super Sport championship in 01 mm -hmm. so I won a bad sure you know, we finished fourth in the world championship in 012 in the world endurance thing so I was alright on the short circuit but it's just part of the jigsaw that's gone yep you know, whenever anything happens in racing, they're never ever related to doing a World Supersport year. Okay. So I, I bought a bike, it's got all the right bits and pieces on it. We'll, we'll, Bit put, of a deal we'll put it, it on the bottom of the screen here, former World Supersport rider, just <laughs> yeah. so it gets some people. Well, that's it, yeah. 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 And, and by the way, I did do some World Supersport. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's part of the jigsaw that's missing. So I just thought it'd be just different to make one. Yeah. No, loads of blades, I've loaded, everything, you know, Legends and HM Plant and all that, which is fantastic. But yeah. I did actually do that, so okay. that's the plan. So that's watch this right. space. We'll do a little video. Well, it, think, as, as soon as you figure out what model year that you bought, do you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, do you know? It, 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 the bike actually was that red piranha bike, which belonged to Simon Andrews, the late, late Simon Andrews. And Simon was a teammate of mine in 2014, I think. And TT Legend. Yeah. TT Legend, World Endurance. TT Legend, 2012. Yeah, good. Good crack. I yeah, liked him. Yeah. I liked him a lot. So that's on the bench then for parades or just kind of part of. Don't know really. I think it. I think it, it's a runner. It's a good bike. I mean, I always try and think ahead. You know, this classic sort of TTs gathering a bit of momentum. Yeah. Uh, you know, the late new modern two fifties in. We're into. into you know, that ZX, era, yeah. Yeah, ZX, ZX seven Rs so and you know big maybe. Big boy ZX six is in there and. Well, they're allowed, aren't they? Up yeah. to eight hundred and some. <laughs> And you've got 1100 bandit engines, I don't understand it. They don't get me involved with all that. It's like my pattern as well, that's about as popular as a fart in a spacesuit. Guaranteed win, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's good because I'm on it. <laughs> There's a few people, oh, it's not fair that bike, no, it's not in the spirit of the sport. But yeah, I mean, you know, that, that bike might come eligible. And yeah. the one thing about it, it's a simple thing, it's not full of electronics. I can put a battery on it and go, <laughs> it'll yeah. start. And then yeah, if, any, if I, any lads want to ride it? Yeah. It's just a good, safe bike to ride. So, do you think we'll see that? Because you're going to be at all of our Bennett's Rewards track days, or five Ooh. track days. Think you'll have it ready this year, or? Yeah, I'm going for it. Do you want it there? Oh, I'll have a go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Put me under a bit of pressure now to get it ready. I could do, yeah. Basically, the bike's okay. Just wants just a good minty note and a spanner check and fresh oil, and I'm going to Definitely paint some it. fresh tires. So, do you think it's going to be like a busy back half of the year for you? Because you've got to see five rounds of GK. You're going to be at some of the Scarborough events for the parading and... Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, they're the priority at the minute of those uh, five rounds we're gonna do. Uh, I'd like to ride my Kawasaki. I'd like to ride my ZX-10 at some stage. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna... Have you ridden it? No, not not my Quattro plant, Bournemouth one. Uh, I've never ridden a, a road one either. Uh, I raced one in 2004 for Hawk Kawasaki, but things have moved on a bit, but... Um, I just, I think Pete obviously is a family business and the family business has, has, has had one in the ghoulies over the last couple of months. Bournemouth Kawasaki. So, you know, I've got to give the man a bit of space and, uh, you know, uh, we're only due now, aren't we? And the, the, the job's just starting to, to move. So I think I'd like to have a spin on it somewhere, a test, or I think <clears throat> we're penciled in to ride the, the Kawasaki, operate it. Scarborough, yeah. So I think you're not allowed to race thousands at Scarborough. I think the limit's 600. So I think you can parade thousands. So it would be good for the crowd, good for the, you know, I'll just blow 
blowing my cobwebs out as well. So. I was going to ask you to ride the SP1. Oh, I think I'd seen a ride in Kawasaki, but we can have a go on it. I did race one of them. I know you did. I raced an SP1. Yeah, yeah. No, they're definitely part of my journey. Or <laughs> career. Career. But yeah, I've got one in my bike collection and uh, yeah, they're a quirky I think ours is better than yours though. No, it's not. Not as, not, not as original as mine. He hasn't been up the road in the middle of my village and laid under laid under a Mark V Escort yours, so no, it's probably that's all yeah. part of its <laughs> journey. <laughs> his journey, yeah. So you got so you got parading at Scarborough. You've got five got? rounds, Ducati, five yeah, track days five, with us. Five, five track days. And I just don't know how things are going to work out, really. It's I don't know, really. Northwest, North they're talking I'm, about it, aren't no, they? No, I don't think Northwest is Northwest is done. Okay. Goodwood Revival's done, which is a shame. Uh, the stars of Macau. Done. Yeah, Macau's on. Is it? Yeah, Macau's on. going to work? I don't know. I don't know. We've all had emails and we're all... I think at the minute we've all gone, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll have a do at that, blah, 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 and give us a shout near the time, you know. Yeah. I think... I won't uh, put my flights just... Yeah, yeah but I, I mean, I don't know how flying's going to go and, you know, would you be wanting to sat on a plane in, in November with 500 troops on it? I, I don't know how it's all going to work, but... Hey, I'd get on a plane tomorrow. Yeah, so you'd be... Yeah, I, you... I would go. Uh, but, you know, I, I, it, it's, you know... I don't know what I'm going to be riding if I go to Macau. Mm. Sort of, sort of semi shook hands with Birdie last year to do it again, but I don't know if Pete would go with the Kawasaki. But uh, I mean, there'd be a few. I'm sure there's a few shop openings and stuff from that. I mean, people know more than us. I, I'm well, just, yeah. I'm waiting. I'm ready to go. But you're not, you know, you, you know, you seem enthusiastic. We've spoken a lot during lockdown, and you've you've always seen enthusiastic. I mean, it must be frustrating. You're usually out so many times during the year, but. Yeah. Like you said, it's not been bad here. You've been with the family. You've, you've been playing with some toys, got some stuff done. But <laughs> is that just made you want it even more? You know, you're not. It does, but I like I went back early on. I'm, I'm on a bit of a roller coaster at the minute. You know, yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, I need direction, really. You know, I need somebody to go. I like to be told what to do. You know, like <laughs> it, this be, is where you go. Doesn't Becky do that? But yeah, I get, I get uh, my ass handed to me. By her a few times, but we're just we're all in a bit in the doldrums, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, we don't really is. know, do we? I mean, I, well, hey, I've worked hard on them bikes. I've, you know, there's there's people come out of the woodwork with the industry who are gonna, you know, helped us out with with chains and 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 you know sprockets and then hoses and bodywork and forest hangers and that. And I've had to lean on a few people, and I've quite enjoyed it. You know, the bikes are there, they're ready to go. I've had a spin on it. Now, I, the the, the belly's burning, you know. Uh, I mean, I rode five, I think I rode four times last week. We did two enduro rides, one motocross, a, a trip to, you know, uh, to Alton on the Wednesday. Yeah. I went out with a lad called Craig Cook, who's an England speedway rider on Thursday with motocross bike. So, you know, but we're, 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 it, it's all happening now, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's been a bit flat for a bit now. It's starting to starting to take momentum. And, you know, let's uh, all, all hope it goes. I hope the spectators go. I hope the spectators yeah, yeah, can we'll... go. It'd be really weird to ride without spectators. I don't know if it'll be the same. I like yeah. I like the whole thing, the whole atmosphere of it and the whole, you know. But like you said, though, in the is... grand scheme of things, you know, if the, the fact that some racing is going to mm. happen, which is great, and yeah, mm. it'll be, be dis you know, it's the same for us. We want to be talking yeah. to riders and we, you know. Like I say, I, the ball's started to, to roll a bit now and the... Uh, been lucky, lucky again, really. You know, I've got Pete from Bournemouth, lovely fella. Yeah, I met him in Rochdale, and he's enthusiastic. He's bubbly. He wants a job to go. He's so disappointed. You know, I missed the TT. We, you know, we shouldn't be there. And and, and he said, you know, the bike's there for you next year. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's something to look forward to in it. Yeah. Again, you know, and the the Ducatis, uh, the Ducati Cup things, filling the hole till we get the real business which is you know northwestern tt but your journey has taken quite a few ups and downs but are there any things that you kind of wish you had tried and had or an opportunity that was given to you and you, you turned it back for whatever reason and thought oh, in hindsight maybe that maybe was... may, maybe my biggest problem would be probably my training probably my bit of my weight really i've always been a bit of a lump <laughs> i've always got away with it yeah but it's always been a little niggly glitch and it comes up a lot you know and then when you get told you you know you're a bit fat it you laugh it off 20 times but then the 21st time it will go a bit deeper 
So who said that then? No, uh, just bosses and people and the riders. I mean, the right, you know, I'm no excuse. You know, I, I, I had contracts with Honda and they asked me to do things and I didn't do it. I delivered the results, but I didn't do... Jump through the hoops for the... You know, they're, they're, fitness. You know if they have to change an engine, it's up to two o'clock in the morning. And I'm on fish and chips and I've, they've got an argument. So yeah. it, it's sort of one little chink in it that I probably should have tidied up, if anything. I spent probably a year too long on 250s. But I goes back to my, I think I'm a loyal person and Birdie wanted me to run the number one plate in 2000, which I did. You know, I bust my leg. I wanted another TT, then bust my leg and things started going wrong for a bit. But, I, you know, I, I had options of going to the maybe 600 or Superbike earlier, but... Yeah. Birdie wanted me to run the number one plate with the Vimto and the new Demon sponsor, so I did that. Yeah. And probably, probably, you know, in hindsight, I maybe should have. You know, I won it in '99. It was I should have moved on, but I don't think I changed change anything. Though I think that it has been a great change. It has been brilliant. But it's still going on. Yeah, so. I've loved every minute of it. You know, obviously, the injuries and a few bits and. I talked to you forever about friends we've lost and for whatever reason. But I think that, you know, I like Ewan's 19, my boy, my daughter's 10. They're, they're secure, you know, they, they, they won't starve. You know, I provided with, and we've traveled the world. I, I started off, you know, started off for nothing, you know. I never got gifted it. And you're not, it'd be really, really difficult to do it now. Yeah, the way you've done it. Yeah. But I've done a bit for charity over the years and give a bit back, I think. Yeah, you can, sleep, you can sleep easier. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. No, but it's been good. It has been good. And it, and long may it continue, but, you know, Joey was, Joey was 48, was 20 years ago, and I'm in exactly the same position as he was when he won three. Factory team, all the pressure on his shoulders, you know, all that. All them years of experience, and he does a trip, you know, he wins three. Fantastic. And me and Rutter... We're both 48 now, we're both 28 then, looking at this old codger in the middle of the podium with who's won another big Superbike TT, which Amazing. it can happen, it can happen if we want it to happen, or we need a bit of luck, we'll see, see what tomorrow brings, you know, but I'm in gear, still at it, eyesight's good, pass me medical, <laughs> my leg's strong again, so we'll carry on. Brilliant. John, thanks for taking the time <laughs> to speak to us. Cheers, we're not allowed to shake hands, are we? Uh, yeah, we'll go for that. that. Little elbow tap. I cut my own hair, yeah. It's a, it's a COVID, I was you looking the COVID cut. last time I saw you, your bugger grips were bigger and you were... That, that facial hair I grew, facial it was eight hair. or nine weeks of growth and that is the longest I've ever had.